I had to make $20,000 back in 1953. I needed $20,000, which was a lot of money in those days, because I wanted to sponsor myself as an, uh, as an evangelist. And I figured the way to do it is with this new business television, they pay lots of money and, you know, all I have to do is stand up and, and be me, you know. I had been a, a monologist for 15 years and so audiences were mine for the grabbing, you know, and I thought, I'll get their money. So then I thought, well, uh, what, what are they like? What's everybody watching on TV? So I checked it and they were watching a thing called, I think it was the, oh, I think it was the Brady Bunch. Could they have been on in 56, in 53? Some kind of a family show. I think it was called the Webster's, or the, and they, it was the po most popular thing. And it was a, a mundane portrait of a family happenings. And I thought, well, that's what they're watching. I guess that's what I should do. But then I thought, no, I, that's who pedestrian. I can't be so bourgeois. Well, I'll satirize it. And then I thought, oh, Charles Adams already did. So then I said, I'll put Charles. I'll do Charles Adams. We'll get Charles Adams. So I proceeded to make the Charles Adams dress, thinking. And to put on TV. And so that's how I, 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 I did the dress. And then there was a great masquerade ball coming up that 2,000 people used to go to. And they were sophisticated people because this was done by Lester Horton. It was the Lester Horton Ball Carib. And I thought, these are the readers of The New Yorker, and they will recognize this character. Nobody else would know who she was. So I went there, and I practiced my Victorian curtsy because I expected to win. And um, she didn't have a name. But I had lavender makeup, you know, powdered with a little lavender, looking as though I had risen from the grave, turned a little blue, you know, and um, barefooted like that, that lady was, flat-chested, but, you know, otherwise wan and wonderful. I won the first prize, and uh, oh, I ch chose a radio rather than dance lessons. And then I went away. They didn't know who I was, but a, a TV programmer had been there from KABC, a local station, and. He couldn't use me for anything because he couldn't think of a spot for me, but he was transfixed by the visual. Everybody was talking to me all night, asking me about my husband and my family, you know. She wasn't, Morticia didn't have a name then, you know. But now this is a housewife, so I was being a housewife. I wasn't really Vampira yet. So then when, when, when Hans Stromberg, the program director, finally found me after five months, he um, asked Rudy Gernwright, who had been one of the judges, he asked the judges, does anybody know? He said, well, of course I know Milo Normie. She was the first person in California to wear backless shoes. So, uh, and when, where can I find her? Well, she's listed in the phone book as Mrs. Dean Reisner. So they found me, and they told me to come in. And I came in, he said, come in in costume. And I came in during the Ides of March, wearing a great Balenciaga cape coat. And the winds, the winds of the Ides of March were flapping it. And people were coming out of the little bungalow saying, oh, there's Hans Vampire. There's Hunt. I had no hair. I had lost my hair in a beauty parlor accident. And you just didn't see ladies with crew cuts in those days. But I had all sorts of things women didn't see in those days. You know. So he wanted me, but the, the seniors at the station didn't want me because it was too expensive to do the Adams Family. So he said, no, we're just going to steal this one little character and you're going to do it. I said, I don't do that. You know, I don't steal from artists I admire, and I don't steal from anyone. But I said, give me a few days, I'll think of something. So then I saw a book by uh, John Willie, Bondage and Discipline. I said, aha, that's it. I had been a pinup model. I'd been doing cheesecake right at that time. So I took the cheesecake and the Bondage and Discipline, and I cinched her waist. And I got some phallic symbols going, like a long cigarette holder you know, black, and I put in the fishnet hose, I slit the dress, I changed Morticia's statement, right? I gave her Hollywood makeup and the bedangled, bedraggled former glamour hair, former, you know, the glamour cut with a little disarray. And oh, so then I took on the attitude of, I kept the cheesecake mood, you know, but remembering too that there was a bit of Greta Garbo in here and something a little Dostoevsky and something just a wee bit spooky, like Norma Desmond, who had just turned me on big in Sunset Boulevard. Too big. Now when you see it, it looks like I'm imitating Norma Desmond, which I was. <laughs> but I didn't know it, you know, it was subliminal. 
So that was it. <clears throat> he said, OK. He said, he, he said, dress up in costume and come and show yourself to the producers again. So I did. Persuaded them that for $75 a week, I'd do it. Yeah. My take home was fifty nine sixty a week. It all went on taxis and body makeup. 